recent dramatic 12-day nationwide protests in Ecuador ending October 13, 2019, left many expats living in Ecuador wondering what just happened. In this video, the Explore Ecuador team comes together to discuss the events, their personal experiences, and what's next for the Explore Ecuador YouTube channel. Our thanks to Café del Museo in Cuenca for providing a comfortable atmosphere in which to gather. Here's Scott Michael with Candace and Lori. Hello everybody. For those of you who may not know, uh, Explore Ecuador team is made up of seven people who live and love this country. Our mission has always been to show Ecuador and its culture and its beauty. We are not a political party, nor will our videos ever represent a political side. Um, so today we're here to discuss some of the stuff that has happened in the last 12 days here in this country. Um, and uh, so Lori, can you lead us in on, on what's been going on in the last 12 days? Yeah, some people may be saying, what just happened in Ecuador? Well, Ecuador just experienced a 12-day event, uh, which included protests, strikes, and even some uh, riots broke out. Yeah, you know, this has a name here, and it's called Paro. Paro. And um, the last time we had a Paro was nearly 20 years ago, so this is not a real everyday common event. Yeah, absolutely not. And so exactly who and why a lot of people may be asking, you know, who and why did this happen? Um, and there's it's actually there's a, there's a lot of detail that goes into it. Um, we're going to touch some some points on it, but um, I think Candace has a better handle on what's going on. Well, essentially what happened is the president decided to issue decree 883, which eliminated a fuel subsidy for the entire country. And this caused a lot of um, upheaval within the country, and the indigenous decided to go and protest in the capital. It started out with the, a couple of unions striking first, mm -hmm. and there was some agreements reached, and they went back to work for the most part, and then the indigenous announced that they would strike as well uh, yeah. on a specific date. They, they gave notice, yeah. yeah. That if you'd like to learn more about Decree 883, you can Google it. But after 12 days of protest, the indigenous and the president sat down for some mediation with the United Nations. So at the end of this pivotal meeting, the president decided to repeal A83. And at that point, the indigenous leaders decided to call off the protest. He asked the protesters and their social supporters to stop the paro, and he called for peace. Everyone has an opinion of, of how we felt. Um, I can lead with mine. Um, we've been here for, for almost two and a half years now, and um, throughout this whole thing, um, it will may be different what you might have seen on the news or whatever it may be, but um, we, we never felt, I never felt feared, even for a second. Um, we had some blockages of roads here in Cuenca. However, our airport stayed open. The schools were shut down for a little while, which is kind of tough if you're a parent of, of twins. But um, other than that, I mean, I, I didn't for a second feel threatened at all here. So, I mean, does anyone else have an opinion on that? Yeah, there were empty shelves, you know, um, but there were lots of places to find food. There wasn't at any point where you couldn't find food somewhere. Stores. Uh, kept getting replenished Absolutely. from warehouses. So, um, yeah, we were very fortunate in that regard. Yeah, I mean, you never felt shut off. You know, no, you I, never at felt At one shut point, off. we were shut off from the rest of the country by by roads. Yeah. We still continue to have flights in and out of Cuenca every day. Absolutely. And there's still activity. Restaurants were open. Um, you know, a lot of stuff happening in the capital, Quito and in Guayaquil. Um, and a lot of people have seen the imagery from that and, and, you know, that is what it is. But, you know, you see a lot of disturbances around the world and, you know, to see something like this come to peace so quickly um, and to, to such an agreement, it really under, you really understand that this wasn't at all about, you know, anyone trying to make unpeace or, you know, have riots or have criminal activity. It was really to prove a point and to get something done. And when they got something done and then the democratic process, it was, it was done, people were happy, went back to life. Within the next day, we had gas delivered, our, 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 our groceries were restocked, our roads were shut, were, you know, unblocked, and, uh, it, you know, we were back to normal life. And it was just, it was really interesting because you would think that, you know, 
in some other places, you, you, you know, when something like this happens, you, you feel like, oh my gosh, and you almost feel like you're trapped. This is never going to end. Or certain sub parties may break off and cr- so continue, you know, the fight. And at this point, you know, when the indigenous leader turned around and said, you know what, let's call it peace. Everyone dropped down. And it was like, a, it was like we were, you know, three weeks, 12 days earlier. Um, and I found that really incredible, you know, and, and now we're sitting here enjoying coffee at, you know, the cafe and with the sun shining and <laughs> yeah, it's a new day. Yeah. yeah. What I found interesting is when all the people came together to clean up. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah that's here that's called a minga. Yeah. And minga. it's when everyone in the community comes together to help. And in this case, it was to help rebuild. And immediately, I mean, they started that night. Absolutely. Um, and the next morning, you had people from all walks of life, people who had been in the protest, who weren't in the protest. You had the police, you had children, you had teachers, you had firemen, and they, they came carrying brooms, shovels, Absolutely. bags. Um, they started putting the tiles and the, and the cobblestones back in place um, immediately. Yeah. yeah, and that's—I mean—that's really a sight to see. You Just know. shows them the unity. Absolutely, of the, the unity of this country, and that's one of the reasons we choose to promote the peace and the culture in this country, and we choose to live here. You know, for some of us, for life. You know, and, um, and that's why we continue to promote videos like we do to show you the beauty and the culture of this amazing country and its people. The images of the protest and the riots and the strikes—they um, looked a lot like they do pretty much anywhere in the world yeah. where people are upset and they're, they're protesting. For me, the amazing thing was what happened after. Yeah. That was night and day. I've never seen anything like that in any no. other country. No. As soon as the call for peace happened, it happened and it was immediate. And um, yeah, the experience in Cuenca was very different than the experience in Quito, but there were protests um, in in Cuenca and they they made a big mess yeah, they, they did. absolutely did and at first my heart was broken I looked at the pictures and I was like oh my goodness yeah. and then as I look closer I realized you know it's just a big mess and um, by 7 a.m. the next morning I mean they were out with scrub brushes soapy water yeah. brooms it's incredible. Um, putting it all back at uh, the fire department volunteers yeah, both yeah. Sides. It's incredible. really everyone involved I was blown away because the next pictures were like, well, El Centro, is, it's back. Right. Yeah, it's like it never I was, happened. I was shocked. And you know, there's something else I want to I wanna point, get a point on, and, and that is that I think the word purpose we have, we were, it means something here. Because around the world, we have a lot of turmoil. And you know, a lot of us watch this in the news. We watch things, and we can't even figure out what the purpose is. And maybe for some, half the people, there is no purpose. You know, they're just joining in the crowd. You know, this is a, a time to get violent. This is a time to loot. And this, it, when this event happened, and like you said, it ended and started like this. They were out, they had a purpose, they proved their purpose, they marched for their purpose, they protested their purpose, they met, they came to an agreement, and within seconds, the, the city was being cleaned by both parties voluntarily. And that has to be said for this country, because that is amazing. In this day and age, for people to be able to still do that is unbelievable, you know? And I, I, I can't say I've seen it anywhere else. You know, I've, I haven't been everywhere in the world, but you know, it's very rare to find that even in a, a general discussion. If I have a different opinion than you have, we can go on for days, you know, or de- agree to disagree. So I think that's 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 something you should pay attention to before you make it before you form opinions. You know, absolutely. Right, and I I don't want to downplay anything that happened in Quito by any means. I mean, the three of us we had some serious conversations during right. this time. Yeah. You know, to kind of reevaluate everything, but. You know, I think that the point that hits home for me is that there's really no perfect place to live, but for us, this is a perfect place for us. Absolutely. I mean, watch the rest of our videos and you can see where (laughs) that came from. You'll see why. got a lot coming. (laughs) Wait till you see this this footage from Quito. It's unbelievable. Stay tuned. Many of you may or may not know, most of us, all of us, are parents of multiple children. Um, everyone and on the a lot, team, yes. Everyone on the team, and a lot of people think, well, what did you do with your kids? You know, that's got to be scary. The reality is, there was just no school. <laughs> so we still had play dates, you know, the play centers were still open. We, you know, if anything, it got frustrating at home because your kids are like there all the time. But um, I've never, again, I'll state, I never had fear for myself or anyone in my family. I mean, I've never felt f- feared for my children in this country. And I'll be honest, that's one reason I moved here. 
Yeah, it's a shame that um, during all this, you know, Lori and I were on Facebook a lot and we have a lot of expat groups. And one thing that kind of was disheartening to me is that a lot of expats would um, cancel their trip. And while it's understandable, it's understandable. We would yeah. like for you to, to rebook. Absolutely. Yeah, come back. <laughs> So some of you may have gotten notices from your local government or your embassy to not travel to Ecuador, and that was a legitimate reason. However, um, we're here to let you know that for many countries, they have lifted that and they have, they have you know, told everyone that it's fine to, move, to come here, and some of the countries may have not caught up with that yet. Um, I just want you to know um, it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, as you can see here, um, you wouldn't even know anything happened. So if you haven't yet, keep an eye, but if you canceled your trip, please rebook, check with your embassy, um, and make sure that it's okay for you and your family, but uh, take it from me, it's great here. <laughs> you know, th what's amazing about this culture in itself is that three days after this agreement happened, Quito itself was back to 80% with the indigenous and all the local communities coming out on their own voluntarily and cleaning the city up. And if you were to go to Quito now, you may not even realize anything happened. Um, and you know, also as a team, we were in Quito shooting four days of amazing footage. And we came back and you know, in, in the midst of prepping that footage, this began. And as a team we met and we, we kind of thought to each other, you know, what are we gonna do? Um, you know, and after much discussion, you know, we decided that this, we should take this as a new beginning. Um, and I think that uh, we need to continue to explore this country and show people how amazing it is. And so I want you to stay tuned, um, yeah, subscribe. These videos from Quito are amazing and those are coming out next. Um, so please, like I say, ring the bell, subscribe, like the videos we have, and we'll see you guys again soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. At the time of the release of this video, Ecuador's leadership is in ongoing negotiations with unions and the indigenous on how to approach the country's economic challenges.